Welcome back to episode 45 of the Sleeper Sports Media Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Wetosh. Follow all the social medias at nwetosh at Sleeper Sports Media. You'll type that in, you'll find it. The Facebook group, the Facebook page, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, threads, TikTok, all of it. Uh, also, other pages that I'm a part of, Exceptional Sports News, Keenan Mary, all his stuff, um, everything. Uh, go give that a follow on Facebook. You'll find everything there in the group, both groups, all that good stuff. Today's episode is going to be a big one. AEW Full Gear tonight on pay per view. Going to give my picks for that. Week 11 picks, as well as other wrestling news and boxing news. A little bit of everything in this episode. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to also follow on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, wherever the audio goes. And you listen to that, uh, subscribe to you, the YouTube, the big one, uh, 522 subs as of right now, pushing to 600 by the end of the year, and hopefully this one helps. So thanks for tuning in. Broken earlier this week, the, the WWE and the Big 12 have come to an agreement that will see a partnership between the two. Michael Cole revealed this Friday on SmackDown that this the logo will be on the field and around the event on the Big 12 Championship in Dallas, Texas on December 2nd. Not only that, but the most outstanding player after the Big Ten of the Big 12 Championship will be awarded a custom WWE title belt by a WWE superstar. This is fantastic for the Big 12 and the WWE get the partnership going with other sports, much like the NFL titles that they do and across all the other major sports where the champions, the team that wins the championship gets a custom WWE title belt. Love this idea. Going to be huge for the Big 12 and for WWE. As I said before, SmackDown next week is on FS1, live from Chicago. Not sure why they're on FS1. Next week, baseball is over. It must be Something else must be coming to Fox at, in that 8 o'clock time slot. I do think this is a little weird, given it's right before a premium live event. But... Still good, it should be a good show. The Go Home episode of SmackDown before the premium live event the next day on Saturday. Much like last night, Collision, Rampage, all one one time for the Go Home episodes of AEW before the pay-per-view full gear tonight, which I'm very excited for. But FS1, SmackDown next week. Let's go. It was reported by Happy Punch via the graphic here from Happy Punch. Tyson Fury revealed that he made $62 million for the Francis Ngannou fight. That is absolutely insane for the amount of the time that people had to wait to actually watch the main event and then the main event itself, Fury getting knocked down and Ngannou actually winning the fight, but them giving it to Fury, robbery, um, and now it revealed that he got $62 million for that fight. That is absolutely insane. Wonder what he's going to do next. I saw this video posted but a couple days ago on the WWE YouTube channel. It was a video of a match with Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton with CM Punk on commentary. Later to find out that it was removed, the report came via ringside news. I saw this on Facebook, their Facebook story, which is what the graphic is. But WWE took down the video of Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes. This was after... Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso on Monday Night Raw, after the after it went off air, said that they have friends that they can call to, referring to Drew McIntyre, interfering with their tag team title match in the main event of Raw, and seemingly joining the Judgment Day, more than likely being that fifth member for the men's war game match. Don't know if they're going to add a fifth, fifth members to the women's or if they're going to do 4v4. Still don't know if they're going to do a 4v4 for the men's or if they're going to add Drew McIntyre and then potentially Randy Orton to the men's side of the war games war games matches but this was I thought this was interesting I mean I guess this is too coincidental for all the rumors that have been going around all the teases and references that that WWE has been doing to reference both CM Punk and Randy Orton I'm hoping that they both return I think that with the go home episode of Raw being in the arena that Randy Orton was last seen in for WWE, I think that's where they bring him back. And then Saturday night in Chicago, Shinsuke I think will be on the card, and then that's where they bring back Punk. Where else would they do it? Um, Rollins is going to be involved in the War Games match, so you can't really do it that way, unless that'd be the main event. And you see Rollins walking back, then Punk comes out, whatever. 
Um, but I think Punk comes back, goes to Shinsuke immediately because of all the vignettes he's been doing. It just makes sense. The Santos Escobar LWO segment storyline, not a fan of it. Um, but Carlito versus Santos Escobar has been added to Survivor Series War Games. Uh, this will be my bathroom break. I just, I don't, the this whole storyline, Carlito's return at Backlash this year in Puerto Rico did nothing for me. The, same with everything about this. Um, his, the heel turn, it makes sense, whatever. Also kind of felt too soon. Um, him on the mic, it just does nothing. But this match is now on the premium live event. And the next match that I'm going to talk about that was announced for from the Friday, this Friday on SmackDown for next week after the Profits won the number one contendership. Um, SmackDown will be on FS1 next week, so I can see why they're already advertising with a big match um, for that episode of SmackDown that will be on FS1. The Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship, The Judgment Day versus The Street Profits. I'd rather see that on the pay-per-view premium live event than Santos Escobar versus Carlito. WWE has officially announced that Backlash will be in France May 4th, 2024 per Sports Kita from the graphic here. And this news broke on Thursday or Friday this week from WWE, Triple H himself. He is really making a point to take the company globally and make sure that people know that the first W in WWE is world and a lot of global and international pay-per-views premium live events have been announced for 2024 and probably more in the future. Maybe eventually WrestleMania happening over in the UK somewhere. We got Backlash in France, Elimination Chamber in Australia, and then the Bash in Berlin later in the year. Big, big news going global for WWE and their pre premium live events. Speaking of the premium live event in February, Elimination Chamber in Perth, Australia, Another big announcement for that show, Logan Paul announced it himself with the graphic from WWE who then announced it around the same time or later announced it. Personally, I saw it from Logan Paul first, but he has announced that he will be at Elimina the Elimination Chamber premium live event in Australia in February. Don't know if that's going to be his next appearance in WWE, his first title defense. I see him being in the Royal Rumble um, and whoever he is eliminated by in the Rumble or has that moment with in the Rumble, that's going to be his opponent for Elimination Chamber. Unless he's in the Elimination Chamber, which I don't see that happening, uh, more likely defending the t U.S. title at Elimination Chamber in Perth, Australia. Pump for that because that's the February Premium Live event and the final Premium Live event before WrestleMania, which I have been seeing. Logan Paul could be working with Bad Bunny on night two of WrestleMania. That's when Bad Bunny is available. I'm sure there's other creative options and opportunities for Logan Paul to defend the US title against an LA Knight, which uh, that was my immediate thoughts. But big news, Logan Paul Elimination Chamber confirmed by him and WWE themselves. It was reported yesterday that Ronda Rousey was seen backstage at Collision and the reason we we found out the reason why. She is seemingly signed with ROH, which is owned by AEW. I don't give it, I, I give it little to no time before she is finally, actually and finally in AEW. I don't mind this signing. I think that there's, it would be new faces for her to, to go up against Britt Baker, Ronda Rousey, that type of, those type of matches would be awesome to see. Um, and the WWE fans hating on Ronda Rousey will still be there, not as much. And now it's the AEW fans that will either cheer for her just because she's there now and not in WWE anymore, or they're going to just hate on her because that's what wrestling fans love to do. Breaking news from Wrestle Features, Rey Mysterio, who has been wrestling th for three months on a torn meniscus, has finally gotten surgery. Last week on SmackDown, when he was taken out of action by Santos Escobar after his knee was crushed in with the steps, 
This, uh, this is the reason why. He went three months wrestling on a torn meniscus while holding the U.S. championship. So, it, again, it was the right reason, right time, right reason for Logan to win the title at at the at Crown Jewel. Speedy recovery wishes for Ray to get back whenever he can. We know that he's not done. He's been – this just shows the legend that he truly is. Um, this is from Wrestle Feature – Wrestle features via Twitter per WOR. Get well soon, Ray. Via Bodyslam.net and Cash Hoodle, AEW has requested a new entrance theme for Sky Blue, which is ready as of today, could potentially be involved with the new theme and entrance. Tonight at AEW Full Gear. I'm pumped for this. I hope she brings also brings out the Scooby-Doo gear. That was sick. Uh, this is from Draven Wrestling Covers on Twitter via Cass Hoodle. Via Body Slam Net. This is sick. Great news. Breaking news from AEW Full Gear tonight. Can't wait. This is my week 11 NFL picks for... From Sleeper Sports Media, Thursday night was Cincinnati and Baltimore. I wanted Cincinnati to win so the Steelers could jump into first place, having the head-to-head to both Baltimore and Cleveland. Um, so the Steelers game tomorrow is going to be big, going to be big, big, big time. Uh, next game, Dallas and Carolina. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. Much as I much as I hate that, um, Steelers Browns. Obviously the Steelers, Bears Lions, go Lions. Chargers, Packers, I'm going to go with the Packers. Texans, Cardinals, I don't like it, but the Texans. Uh, Titans, Jags, I guess the Jags, because the Titans are inconsistent and Jags all day. Raiders, Dolphins, going to go with the Dolphins. Giants, Commanders, Giants, Commanders, Giants Bucks, Niners, going to go with the Bucks and, with the upset. Jets, Bills, probably another upset. Seahawks, Rams. Go Seahawks, Geno Smith all day. Sunday night football, Vikings and Broncos. Going to go with the Vikings. And then Monday night, second game of the week that I'm looking forward to. Eagles, Chiefs in Kansas City. Going to go with the Eagles. Time for time for what everyone's waiting for. The AW Full Gear predictions from Sleeper Sports Media. Kicking off with Zero Hour. The Ring of Honor World Titles. World Tag Team Championship, MJF and Samoa Joe versus the Guns. I think this is going to be a good match. Probably going to be the final. Maybe might open the show and give another one of those MJF opens and closes the shows to show that he is the champion. He's the guy. He's now now this great babyface MJF. He's our scumbag. Everything um, everything of that nature. Picking MJF and Samoa Joe. Made official last night on Collision or Rampage, one of the two. It was announced Friday night. Buddy Matthews versus Claudio. The third match, and as of now, the final match on Zero Hour, Eddie Kingston versus Jay Lethal for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Easily picking Eddie Kingston to retain. Uh, Big Eddie Kingston fan. I think a dream match of mine would be him versus Kevin Owens, without a doubt. And anything goes, the they will put their bodies through through to the test and through limits that we don't even know are possible. Um, not a fan of Jay Lethal at all or what what he's doing with the group that he's in. Um, Eddie Kingston absolutely to retain the Ring of Honor World Championship to close out Zero Hour and to send it off to pay per view on Bleacher Report. Tony Khan announced on Twitter the other day that he has come to terms with a big free agent that is well well known, well respected by the entire AEW fan base. We are going to find out who this person is. They're going to sign their contract on full gear. This is this order is was the order that is on the AEW Instagram. That's where I got the graphics from. Um, don't know if this is going to kick off the pay per view. Don't know if this is going to be at the very end of the uh, end of zero hour, but. No idea who this could be. My guess would be since Ronda Rousey seemingly already signed to ROH, it won't be her. Um, no idea who it could be. Seen reports, rumors that it's Will Ospreay. If that's the case, that's huge. Um, but also kind of want it to be someone else, someone that I know and that I'm actually a fan of, not Will Ospreay because I have 
not really ever watched him wrestle besides of what I've seen of him already in AEW. Maybe that'll change if it is him. But Blockbuster signing will be on full gear. Don't know if it's going to be on the pay-per-view or on Zero Hour, but I can't wait for this to kick off, more than likely kick off the pay-per-view. This one could be potential match of the night for me. AEW International Championship, Orange Cassidy versus John Moxley 2, the rematch. Uh, they made a big point to note that Orange Cassidy did win the title back after losing it to John Moxley, but it's important to him that he beats John Moxley. Um, this was hyped up very well on the the countdown to full gear and everything they did leading up to it on yesterday on Friday. Um, Orange Cassidy, I think, will retain and finally beat John Moxley um, and let Mox keep doing what he's doing with the Blackpool Combat Club. Another way for Mox to put over someone young and upcoming just orange cassidy is the international championship and i think it would be great if he were to retain orange cassidy over mox could be another potential match in the night right here the golden jets kenny omega and chris jericho versus the young bucks in their own backyard with a couple stipulations if kenny and um, kenny omega and chris jericho win they become the number one contenders for the AEW world tag team championships that is currently held by the young bucks they are the number one contenders, and they are fine with this. They made this this deal a couple weeks ago on Dynamite when the match was first introduced and proposed. The Young Bucks, if they win, they stay number one contender for the AEW World Tag Team Championship, and Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, the Golden Jets, are no more. Kenny has to come back with them. They be the elite again. Chris Jericho goes on on his way. Good build for this one. Chris Jericho on commentary last night for Rampage. Did take a shot, a little cut a little promo against the Bucks, saying they're gonna win. The Golden Jets are gonna win. Show them that their kids, you know, the vets here, kids there, um, in their backyard of of Los Angeles, California. Very excited for this one. But I'm going, going Young Bucks to win and continue being the number one contenders for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. The AEW. Women's World Championship, Tony Storm versus Sakura Shida. Uh, easily picking Tony Storm for this one. Don't understand the Shida hype. I'm not into that side of wrestling. And plus, this timeless Tony Storm has been fantastic. The character she's doing, everything about it is it, it's funny, it's entertaining, and it's just it's good. And I would love to see Tony Storm win the title back, and then in 2024, a Mercedes Monet pop up since. So Mercedes Monet did say that she will be back in the ring for a company. Didn't say which one, but for a company in 2024, that would be huge. Uh, timeless Tony Storm to win in what she's calling her Hollywood homecoming. Tony Storm over Hikiru Shida for the AEW Women's World Championship. The trios match. This is a wild graphic to look at that we are seeing this in 2023 in AEW. Luchasaurus, Luchasaurus Christian Cage, Nick Wayne. Versus Darby Allen, Adam Copeland, and Sting. Uh, this I still can't believe Adam Copeland is in AEW. This is his first match, his in-ring debut for on pay-per-view for AEW. Um, not first match. Uh, the team, these teams are great. I can't believe Nick Wayne turned on Darby Allen. That's what led to Adam Copeland coming in, and then Sting announcing his retirement will be at Revolution in uh, next year, probably in March. Um, this started out with Christian Cage wanting Sting. I'm assuming one on one with the other two ringside there to interfere, do what they do, um, and then turn into a trios match. I do like this idea. I this another not match of the night, but it'll be up there. Maybe an honorable mention for match of the night, at least for me. Um, I'm going Sting, Darby Allen, and Adam Copeland to get the win here, and then eventually we're gonna see. Probably, I would, I could see Adam Copeland having to go through Nick Wayne, go through Luchasaurus, and then get to Christian Christian Cage for their ultimate the, their match that, which is what this is probably leading to, along with Sting going on to Revolution for his final match, and then Darby Allen, Nick Wayne, young careers that they have. It's gonna be gonna be a lot of fun to watch what all happens with these six and how they stay intertwined together, along with Ric Flair being involved going to Sting and his final match at AEW Revolution next year. If I could give out three match of the night matches, this would probably be 
The third one, if not, will be the match of the night. Just tough to say with all the other matches that are on the card. And the great storytelling for this one probably gives it an edge right now. Um, Texas Deathmatch, Hangman Adam Page versus Swerve Strickland 2. Their match at Wrestle Dream was awesome. I enjoyed that one. Uh, not a big, was never really a big fan of Swerve when he was in WWE because he was in NXT for so long and then got up to the main roster and they did nothing with him until he got fired, which Hangman Page did bring up in his promo on Dynamite or Rampage, one of the two, this past week to really get that final build. And I will say, if I hadn't already bought the pay-per-view, it was Wednesday on Dynamite. If I hadn't already bought the pay-per-view earlier Wednesday morning, I would have seen this and bought it immediately after this. It was a great promo, great segment. This match should be really, really good. Uh, going to Hangman Page to win over Swerve Strickland. Another match I'm really excited for, the TBS Championship three-way. Julia Hart, Chris Statlander, and Sky Blue. It was, like I said earlier in the video, this episode, Sky Blue reportedly getting a new entrance, new theme, whatever. Hopefully she gets that, brings that Scooby-Doo gear back. That was awesome. Uh, Julia Hart, Chris Statlander, all doing great things. I, It's a toss-up between who I want to win, who I would like to see to win, and who I think is going to win. The fact that Sky Blue could be getting new entrance and new theme makes me lean to her. But also, Chris Statlander has been doing great with the TBS Championship. Makes me think that they might keep pushing her, keep giving her title defense, title defense, title defense, and elevate that title to what it was with Jade Cargo when she held it to get even past that. Um, I'd like Sky Blue to win, but I think Statlander retains. That's my final pick. Statlander over Julia Hart and Sky Blue. This is going to be a wild one. Ladder matches always are. This was announced last night on Collision by the commentary team that this will now be a fatal four-way four -way ladder match for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. You have FTR, Ricky Starks, and Big Bill, House of Black, and then La Faccione, Rush, something, something. Um, not I, I got to say I'm not a fan of Ricky Starks and Big Bill being tag team champions. But I'm also tired of seeing FTR as as the champs, although another FTR Young Bucks match would, would be great. FTR Golden Jets would be awesome. That I wouldn't mind seeing that at all. Um, House of Black would be cool to see them, but they're not not Judgment Day type to the point where I would like to see them every single week doing something in whatever they do. The Judgment Day, House of Black, the comparisons are there, but Judgment Day as tag champs, House of Black as tag champs, it would be fun, but ultimately it would get old fast. FTR to win the ladder match, become once again AEW World Tag Team Champions, and then face either the Young Bucks or the Golden Jets, whoever are the number one contenders after their match on Full Gear. And the main event, the man who will open the show more than likely on Zero Hour and close the show on pay-per-view, the AEW World Champion MJF, the longest reigning AEW World Champion. He is at 364 days. Tomorrow will mark one year since he won the title at Full Gear last year. It's funny how that works. He has to get through Jay White first. Jay White, who stole, who has the title belt, who stole the title belt over a month and a half ago, refuses to give it back. Tony Khan made a comment saying he doesn't just tell Jay, Lee, Jay White to give it back because MJF doesn't need him to do that. They're going to fight it out. And if MJF gets it back, it will be because he wins in the main event of Full Gear. Love this match, build, everything about it. The storyline shows MJF in the babyface and the, becoming our scumbag doing this and that refusing to go down without a fight blah, blah blah wants to wants this to be his legacy jay white being jay white was never a big fan of him before until not even really that big of a fan of him now he's a heel whatever blah blah, blah. but the guns the not a fan of all that uh cocky douchebaggery um group that you know everyone thinks that the bloodline is for roman but roman is miles above that as a leader of the of his group jay white the leader of his um mjf has a lot riding on this one i think i think this will tell this will predict and tell the outcome of world's end when when we see mjf possibly going to free agency unless he's already signed with resigned with AEW, which i don't it's tough to say if he has 
Um, I do see MJF winning this and it being a great match and then possibly having the person that, in the double mask that stole the MJF's double mask come out and reveal himself as I think it's going to be Jack Perry. And then we're going to set up for Jack Perry and MJF or even some throw Samoa Joe in there in the mix. Maybe they do Samoa Joe and MJF on a dynamite or save that for the pay-per-view world's end in December and then do Jack Perry and MJF have that build. It could be, it's a toss up, honestly, who I think will be the one to take the title off of MJF. I, I want to say that if, if he does lose it at world's end, that kind of shows that he is seriously going to test free agency. I don't know if they would actually do it that way, take the title because he's going to test free agency or if, it's going to be part of the storyline. It's going to be fun to see. Can't wait for it. MJF over Jay White tonight in the main event of AEW Full Gear. Cannot wait for this event to start. About three, two, three hours to go.